Gentlemen, I really want to start with a congratulations. You guys did made such an exceptional film, and I have tons of questions. But before we get into that, I have a few, uh, let's just say, curveballs to start things off. For both of you, if someone has actually never seen anything you've done before, what is the first thing you'd like them watching and why? Well, in that case, that will be the first film I'm in. I think you should start from there, uh, which is called Pusher, Pusher One. So that's from... Uh, 1995, 90, I believe, yep. Yeah. Uh, being a director, I will always say watch the last film I've, <laughs> I've done because you always, as a director, usually sort of hate the, all the other movies you do like uh, when, and see them in a perspective of, oh my God, I was so young, I didn't know what I was doing. So I would always say watch the, watch the last film I did, no matter which film it is. I've heard that from, from other directors. If he, for both of you, if you could get the financing to make anything you want tomorrow, what is the thing you'd like to make and why? Oh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Can you, can you bring Bruce Lee back from the dead? <laughs> Just, how much money does that take? I'd, li I'd like to be in a film with Bruce Lee and Buster Keaton. Yeah. I don't know what the film is about, but it's going to be great. <laughs> I, I actually, I want to do a follow-up to that because right now behind the scenes, there's a lot of people selling their likeness rights because of what's going on with AI. And at some point in the not so distant future, what you just said is actually possible. So does that frighten you? Or if someone came to you and said, with AI and computers, we can literally make this movie, would you be interested in it? No. <laughs> no, I know I, I, I want to meet Bruce Lee I got and Buster Keaton. I got it. I mean, there are pers perspectives that, that's interesting. And for certain kind of films, obviously, the big blockbuster, let's say, Marvel, fantastic films, there, there are certain things that you can get away with if you want to jump in time, have somebody who's 20 years old and then 80. Uh, I think within the realm of, of still being creative, you can do something interesting, but just giving your image away, is, I don't think any, anyone wants to be part of that. So did you figure out what you'd make if you could get the financing for anything? I don't know, man. I think probably some sci-fi movie. Like in Denmark, the, but we don't have big budgets. Uh, it's where the money is quite small. But uh, I, di I do have a dream of one day making a sci-fi movie, and I think that but that's going to be hard on a Danish budget. But maybe I'll try one day. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you looking at me? So. I don't know. <laughs> Because if I are you in it, Matt? If you I want to be paid, if, if I can get you to star in it, maybe it'll be easier to finance. You know. <laughs> I am curious. What do you think would surprise? And maybe you've sort of just answered it. But what do you think would surprise people to learn about making movies in Denmark and in Hollywood? Well, yeah, obviously the budget, <laughs> um, and also the amount of people uh, in Denmark. You say good morning to fifteen people, and in America you say good morning to three or four hundred, right? Uh, and uh, so that's a difference um, in terms, I mean, for me, it's a different thing. As an actor, you go in into that world, you, f you find the uh, parameters of, 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 of the framework of what we're doing. There might be a genre in there and, and you try to, to make it as honest as possible within that world. So uh, I can't call the director in the middle of the night the same way I can call Nick. Uh, which I, you told me not to, <laughs> but I still did. At some uh, point, you have to sleep, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but besides that, we, we will enter a world that is pretty much the same. It's just a different, different um, uh, relationship you have with each other. For a director, I believe it's a very different thing. Yeah, for a director, it's very different. There's, there's a couple of reasons. First of all, when I'm making movies in Denmark, I, it's very much my work. I have final cut. I have final say. It's my vision from top to bottom and from beginning to end. And I've done one film here, let's not speak too much of that, uh, <laughs> which was not my film. It ended up being something I, I didn't have, you know, really power to sort of like make, I mean, it, it was a lot, there was just a lot of decision makers. Everybody wants to make a good movie, but if you're like a hundred chefs on the same thing, it's very hard. I, especially coming from a Danish background of the auteur cinema, it's very hard to find your footing in that system, I felt at least. Uh, Mads, individual question for you. I am a really big fan, just like everyone in the room, of your work. I think you're an exceptional actor, and I'm just curious 
when you are getting ready to film, a, a, say, The Promised Land, um, how early on are you thinking about the character prior to the first day of filming and thinking about what you want to do? How much are you sort of doing a lot towards the end? Like, could you sort of take us through your process a little bit on getting ready for a role? Well, I, I get invited in on, on different stages in, in, um, in different films. In, in, in American film, it's, it's, it's written, it's always done. Uh, say the words, don't... Uh, don't uh, knock over the furniture and you're fine, right? Uh, here in Denmark, it's a different thing. Uh, I'm, I'm invited in when the story is almost done and then we start talking and we develop. They do listen to me and I can have some inputs and sometimes they say, well, that's a bad idea, but I will insist and we can go back and forth. Um, then on the first day of shooting, it's very interesting because I think about it all the time. It's a gradual development of the character. <clears throat> I'm always curious why we're going to shoot the first day because the first day is very important for everyone, obviously for the director. Everybody's thinking about it. We're not we're not going to shoot the most difficult scene the first day, but what he might think is not a super difficult thing can be a very difficult scene for my character. It can be somewhere I I haven't really found yet. Maybe it's just nice to see him do some walking first. You know, and so, so I'm always curious, but it's it's a challenge, and I'll take it up every time. Donald Sutherland told me something that I found fascinating. He said that he now <laughs> demands that the first day or two of filming, he is filming things from the middle of the movie because that way, by then, the people have bought into what I'm selling, and I can figure <laughs> it out. And you know what I mean? Yeah, that's smart. Oh, yeah. yeah, he's a smart man. I when he said it to me, I'm like, this is brilliant. You know, right. so let me ask you another follow up on acting. Say you have a very emotional or dramatic scene on a Monday morning and you know it's going to it's a challenge. It's going to it's going to you know, you got to pull uh, to deliver what you are trying to do. How much how how far before Monday morning when you're going to film? Are you thinking about that scene? Is it months early? Is it at the beginning of the shoot or is it like, you know, over the weekend you are really in it? Hopefully we've addressed that scene a long time ago. So we know what it's about. We know where we want to go approximately. <clears throat> if I overthink it two months before, I'm going to strangle that scene. I won't, even, I won't have the balls to go there at all. It has to be a, 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 you know, a natural, gradual development of the film. So when that scene pops up, we shouldn't be afraid of it. We should be ready for it, but we shouldn't over-prepare for it. Having said that, if it's... Five in the morning, I will, I will get up one in the morning and, and get ready. I mean, I'm not going to go s straight into the scene. <laughs> but, but I don't think you, sh you, you should overthink stuff. I mean, if we, if we touched upon it, we're on the same page. Don't strangle it. Let it be a, 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 a natural development. Jumping into why I get to talk to you guys uh, for this, and a little generic, but for both of you, what was it about this material that said, I need to make this? For me, it was uh, I just it's a novel. This is an adaptation of a novel, uh, and and it was just re reading the novel and just falling in love with the characters. I think the first character I fell in love with, sorry, Mask, but that was not your character. That was uh, the character I have, and my moose, the little girl. Oh uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, so the the girl, the little girl, she was the one I fell in love with first, and then came uh, somebody else. I don't remember, and then maybe you. Uh, but uh, <laughs> no, I'm kidding, of course. But I but I also saw I saw a very personal. Uh, it was personal to me because it's 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 a film about. Uh, and I'm a very ambitious guy who finds out very late in life that there's something else to life other than his ambitions and his drive. And I've had that same tra tra trajectory. I'm sorry, that's a hard word when you're not uh, English speaking. Uh, I had my first uh, child when I, uh, three years ago, which is quite late. I'm 51. So it wasn't until that happened that I realized, oh my God, there's a whole other world. And it's kind of the same thing that... Uh, Ludwig experiences in the movie. So to me, it was reading something that felt like close to my heart. Well, I, I just got a uh, offered a part, so uh, <laughs> I, I didn't. I didn't know. The, I didn't read the the, the book. Um, uh, for me, it was a pitch, and then it was a script, and from there on, we start working. Um, I don't have much to add. I mean, it, 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 I don't. I can't tell the big difference working with Nick uh, was it ten years ago and now. But then again, I can. There is definitely a different kind of focus. I mean, we were younger. There was a lot of energy in that film, and I think we were approaching it with the same professional eyes. But I, there's definitely something happened with 
what the focus of the story is uh, because of obviously you having kids. You guys, the film is uh, on the short list for best international feature, uh, which is a huge honor. What, if, what does it mean to both of you to actually have so many people loving this movie and for it to be you know, shortlisted? It's always great to be recognized. It's always great. But the, the greatest thing about it is that pe the reason we make these films is the, for people to go watch them, right? That's the main reason. So all this sort of, uh, all, all that's going on around the shortlist and the film film festivals and everything, it it, 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 it is really helps uh, people to notice that it's coming and they see it and they, so for me, that's really what it's about. It's getting the film out to as many people as possible. Yeah, it, it, it is. That's the main goal, uh, and but at the same time, you have to understand that there's like thousands of films every year coming out, and that that somebody out there thinks that we are worthy of being among the 15 films that might be nominated for an um, an Oscar is it's incredible. It's incredible. It's mind blowing. And we're Danish. I mean, we're just happy. We're just happy that somebody watched it. We are a country of <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> At what point, though, was it was it the script phase? Was it when you were shooting, or when it was in post production that you both realized, wait a minute, this might be a pretty special movie? I didn't. I, I never realized that. I'm I'm always so uh, self critical, but I've been on every single film I've done, and I never realized with what I've done until somebody else, <laughs> until I see it with an audience the first time. Really, honestly, and but for this, I think it was our our co writer. Uh, Anas Thomas, who's quite a cynical guy, I would say. And when he went in to see a cut, he came out with tears in his eyes like, oh my God, we have something here. Because he was actually moved by it and, and uh, he usually is not. So that was, that, was the, <laughs> that, was the, that was the point for me where I realized it might be a decent film. Yeah, I, I, it felt good. It, it, all, it felt good all, the, all through. Uh, and then had a few scenes with a little girl. He just watched it. She's uh, well, we, she's just priceless, and 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 I remember there was a scene. I mean, you you can feel a certain way, <clears throat> and it doesn't turn out that way. <laughs> that's that's often the case for an actor. Uh, but then I was having a, a little discussion with you. We just shot a scene where the, it, all the the fields are on fire, and she's running around doing stuff. And, and I was looking at the monitor, which I never do. I never watch anything we're doing. And I just saw this am amazing work our DOP was doing. And I thought we were just jumping around with some flames in the background. It was just insane to watch. And that's why I felt like, maybe we're onto something here. Yeah. When you looked at the shooting schedule for both of you, what was a day that you had circled in terms of how the F are we going to do this? Or um, I can't wait to shoot this. For me, and because of the budget constraints, uh, I think we had about $7 million to make this film. Every single day was like, oh my God, how are we even going to do this? So literally almost every day it was like, there's no way. Like the fire scene and the snow and the rain and the thing. And every day is like trying to achieve something that has scope with very little money somehow. So that was the, that was, uh, but, but I always look forward to, to these things because it's a great challenge. But really what I enjoy the most and always have are the small intimate scenes uh, between the actors. So I was always looking forward to these sort of like more melodramatic, if you would say, the dramatic scenes between uh, just maybe you and Amanda who plays in Barbara or you and Melina who plays in Mamus. And especially the scenes between you and uh, Simon who plays Shingle. I was looking forward to those scenes a lot. Yeah, I, I was looking forward to, to all scenes. But I was always, all, also looking forward to the scenes where we... We had the budget in mind, which is always fun uh, because that reminds me of the first times we were shooting <clears throat> when we had a budget of, let's say, $200,000 and we just made a feature film, right? Uh, like the pusher films. <clears throat> and and it, it, this was the case always like, okay, so the, the goat we just killed that is full of blood now, can we somehow clean it up and have it in the background for the next shot? You know, that, that's the way you have, you have to all, everybody has to work together to make this work because it's, that's the kind of budget, right? So I'm fascinated by the editing process because it's where it all comes together. So how did this film possibly change in the editing room in ways you did not expect? There was one big thing because I, I had told myself that I didn't want to make an over 
over a long film and it's I mean it's two hours long so it's already long enough but at one point it was three hours and something in the editing room and I really had to cut something so and this is not something I usually would say to an audience who's just seen the film but there were certain things that we did cut out there was a story there was a lot more story with the priest for instance who became a smaller character there were certain things with the uh, with the uh, Edel, the noble woman, uh, who, uh, which we cut, and and uh, in general, we just tried to um, to make it, you know, not sort of like we, we tried to trim the fat in general and not make it sort of like self-indulgent. And 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 I th- I think that's also uh, part of what you said. That we are different. Uh, Ten years ago, I would have probably been a little bit more in love with, oh, look at the wonderful work we've done. Let's just keep that scene going for 10 minutes. And now I'm much more sort of like, no, we, we will service the story uh, no matter what cost, so. It, well, well, I'm still like 10 years ago. I like films that are four hours long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> but but I do get it. I mean, it, they, they shouldn't listen to me. Occasionally they should, but but I'm the, I'm the one who says, no, 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 it's, it's fine. I mean, for me, a four-hour film can feel uh, fast, and a, and a film that's one and a half hour long can feel like very, very long. If it works, it works. Um, I think they had the, the right mix here. Do you remember what was the last thing you cut out before you picture locked? Oh, God, that's so specific. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do remember that was a scene with the priest. Actually, that was a scene with the priest where he, where Ludwig and the priest are walking around the the the, the in the heath and trying to find a spot uh, for Ludwig uh, to build uh, the house. So yeah, that was probably the last scene that we caught, which was I think three days before a picture lock. Yeah. Are you a fan of like extended cuts, or are you sort of like, for example, with this, you have a lot of deleted scenes. Is it something that you want to show people, or are you sort of like the theatrical cut is the movie? The theatrical cut is the movie, but there will be an extended cut, but that's purely for, uh, I think, streaming. And now, uh, a year from now, uh, we have a sort of like a, a longer version going into the streaming something. Uh, and it's uh, going to be called The Priest. <laughs> <laughs> The priest and the and, and the potatoes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that sounds like a f- f- thrilling movie. Uh, I, no, I am a fan. I actually always watch the director's cuts, even if they're a little worse than the theatrical cuts, because I always like to. I'm fascinated by the stuff that they thought would work, even you know what that they had in the script. I I love that. Uh, Mads, I'm curious. When was the last time? The night before the first day of filming, you were scared shitless about what you were about to step into on set. Like, was there a role that you were really nervous about uh, right before filming began? Mm, no, I mean, th- things that doesn't work on paper <clears throat> will always <laughs> scare the shit out of you, right? Um, scenes that that are difficult and, and, and maybe emotional or very physical, but are, are right. Uh, they, they don't scare you as much as scenes that doesn't work. Scene that doesn't work and you haven't come to an agreement with your director, you just know what the day is going to be like. It's just going to be uphill battle. And, uh, and, and, and that can scare me. Uh, Waking up maybe with a uh, with a with a pain in your back and doing flying kung fu can also scare you. <laughs> uh, I I tend not to be super afraid of things. I, I tend to like grab it by the root. And if there's something that bothers me and will make me afraid eventually, I will pick up the phone and 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 and, and meet up with the people and say let's let's fix this or make me comfortable. Something is not working here. So so I, that's how I approach it. I'm about to open it up to the audience, but one last thing for you guys. Uh, I've spoken to a lot of actors, and they talk about how they really like doing a lot of takes. I've spoken to directors, they really like doing a lot of takes, and some actors like a take or two, and they just want to move on. So for both of you, how many takes do you typically like to do on a movie? And how many takes are you, at what point do you start saying, okay, come on? Or do you enjoy doing just like a few takes? We're completely in sync, I think, yeah. We always do like two takes, yeah. With mass, but that's with you, mass, because you're so precise and you can do the two takes and then you're good. And maybe I'll ask for a third take, right? If there's something I'll, that I'll ask for a fifth take, yeah. if it doesn't work. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's it's, that's no rules, right? Yeah. If it, if we're almost there, then you can see in his face that you, yeah, yeah, okay, 
<laughs> moving on, moving on. Then you go, whoa, 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 no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, that's something Let's wrong. just make one more. This is not working. I mean, and you, you can tell. You can tell when it's not working. You, you, there's a little more in there, right? But often, and you ask most directors and most actors, first or second take, there's what we call in Denmark, the, the, the butterfly dust is there. Mm. There's a certain unknown territory uh, that if we do it too much, it will be over re- rehearsed, right? So th- often the first and the second take, there are some magic in them. Yeah, definitely. But but then of course there's the there's when you then we also had to do a lot. Whenever we did a scene with the the girl Melina who plays and my moose, we did 30 takes because <laughs> she would never remember any of her lines and <laughs> like. And it was constantly like no, but yeah, I, I, but she's a child, right? And she's never done anything before. It's understandable. She speaks right? Swedish and yeah, not yeah. Danish. Yeah, so she barely understood what I was trying to direct her, you know. <laughs> and and what we were looking for was like something supernatural. I mean, just really natural from her. Right. And and the and that came if we just kept going. And she just got fed up with the words. She came up with something else that was yeah. absolutely fantastic. <laughs> and then, and then that's where we we went for a yeah. few times. Yeah. Yeah. There's the. Do you, do you guys remember when she had? one point the, the the little bit in the film where everybody's happy and she goes like pancakes that wasn't any and that was just something she did that was just like literally she was so happy that we had given her real pancakes she was like, pancakes that's it. That's right. and i was like that's great we're gonna use that exactly <laughs> does anyone in the audience oh i think i found i think I, i think there were a few questions we'll start right there hi my name is eden um i just want to say amazing film. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was so great. Um, uh, my question is just, uh, what's your favorite thing about working together? And is there something that maybe working together like that challenges you a little bit? I love every second of working with Matt. Like, <laughs> well, Dido, Dido. Yeah. <laughs> so that's answered. No, I mean we worked ten years ago, and that's always a risk that you. And since then we've become friends. Uh, and then he didn't call me for ten years for some reason. <laughs> And and uh, but you there's always, always tell that story, but you know it's not. Oh, you called me because you wanted to, you know, borrow my bicycle or something. <laughs> you know? There's always a risk when you know each other well, that that you just open the drawer and you do what you're used to. But if you push each other a little, there's there's also the benefit of like we might dare tread on territories that we wouldn't dare to tread on with somebody else, mm. and that that's the benefit of knowing each other really well. Um, was that the question? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, cha- with the, so, so I guess the answer is there weren't a lot of challenges. I mean, we, we, we do challenge each other a lot. We certainly will not get into fights, but we'll certainly like yeah. try to push each other to both be better, you know, at, at whatever, or, or get somewhere where we sometimes we'll get stuck with the scene and we go like, something's missing, what is it? We'll go into a discussion about it. But the beauty of knowing each other so well is that it becomes a very easy conversation and there's no awkward like, oh, I wonder if he doesn't like me, you know? Oh, it's yeah, just well, like, whatever, yeah. we can say anything. So well, when am I gonna get my bike back? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I think that the, the trust thing, there's a very good example in this film, the trust thing, because, We always we're obviously dealing with um, circumstances coming from outside that is making this guy's life difficult and and Barbara's life and the little girl everybody's lives difficult. But at the same time, we're also dealing with a with a person, a character who's creating his own problems. I mean, there's plenty of times he could have turned left instead of turning right. You know. So if you just turn left now, you can shape your story. Everything will be beautiful, but he is so stubborn. So he's creating the own, his own drama. And the trust that we're talking about here is that that, that was in there in, this, in the first version of the story. I thought it could be much more at a certain point. And Nikolai had a hunch it could, but maybe we shouldn't go there too much because we don't want to lose sympathy. But then he trusts me to say, listen, Uh, we'll, we'll we'll get it back home somehow. Just you know, we'll get it back home in this scene, and that's trust. It's like, okay, let him be somebody we dislike for 68 pages, and then it happens, yeah. and that's trust. And uh, and so, so so I think that was a very important part of the story originally, and also in in the script. Uh, but we might not have gone so far with the character if we didn't trust each other. Yeah, yeah. We, you definitely helped enhance that part and made me courageous in terms of not trying to immediately create an, a character that we identify with, but it's more sort of like hard to actually love, which which really works so well for the film. Mm. 
Uh, before we get to the next question, but show of hands, who has a question? I just want to see something. Okay, so this is what I'd like to do, because your answers are great. We'll, we'll, we'll be showing up for However, that However, <laughs> that was, a, you know, it was a great long answer, but we're going to bring it down so we can get through a lot more people. And so we're going to go right there. Invite someone else. Okay. <laughs> okay, we're going to go right there. Question for both of you. Love the film. Uh, I'm a teacher. I'm going to Denmark for the first time this year. I know very little about it. Anything either of you would recommend I do? <laughs> Tivoli. <laughs> Tivoli Gardens, that's always a winner. And I've heard the potatoes are really good. <laughs> nice about it, Matt, have you ever grown anything before? You did a lot of cultivating in this. Have you ever actually grown anything or not? <laughs> Actually, uh, my father-in-law, who's now passed away, he grew potatoes, and I did help him for a couple of seasons, so I knew a little about it. He was better than me, though. I'm going to go, oh, well, I'm going to start right there. Um, thank you both for being here. I love the movie, and I just wanted to ask Matt, um, so what was it like preparing for uh, the scene where Ludwig gets tortured by um, Schinkel and his henchmen? And um, it's, uh, Ludwig is such a... Um, stoic character and yet uh, he's going through this intense brutal uh, emotional and physical experience so what is it like to how do you approach that is that different from other scenes it's it's a little it's a strange thing obviously because i'm not getting whipped in real life sorry <laughs> Just, <laughs> um, so so there's a timing thing going on there so that's a technical thing we have to get out of the way. So if we're both in the frame, I somehow have to know exactly when it hits and we find a way that we have something that I can feel. And uh, but then it's just super cold. And it's just like staying there. It's just super annoying. My knees are hurting. We're doing it for eight hours. And uh, stay in there. And eventually you just want to get out of the situation. Yeah. And, you, and, and imagining something like that is, is what we do. We, we're professional imaginers or liars or whatever. And, and it's just diving there and everybody hates you. The, the guys who are killing you, the guy who's, who's the baron. It's just, um, it's a lonely, and you want to you wanna keep your face. So you're holding it in for a while and eventually you can't, right? So I don't know how to approach that. It's just, sometimes it's just in the room. You can just feel the menace and you just go with it. Right there. Hi. Um, um, I was wondering, I watched the movie Arctic too, and I was wondering, is this movie more physically challenging, or is this, what was your most physically challenging? Arctic. You talked about a film called Arctic. Yeah, where well, I'm at the uh, stranded at the Arctic. <laughs> uh, that that was definitely more challenging in the sense that um, here, when the wind was blowing, it was cold, uh, but we had a trailer <laughs> over there, and we can get some food. That did not happen in Arctic. It was far, far away. It was hours away. And when we got injured, which we did all the time, it was just suck it up. Stay, nobody's coming, you know. Um, and, 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 and here is your food for the day. <laughs> all right, right. So that, that was brutal, really brutal, uh, um, and physically, right? Uh, so, but, but this was also, I mean, I'm, I'm, what am I now? Eight years older than I was when I did Arctic, so it, it was probably just on the same level <laughs> if you do like right there. Uh, first of all, it is wonderful to be in this space with both of you artists. Thank you. Um, uh, well, also, Le Chief Till I Die. Well done. <laughs> Le Chief? Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, but what inspires you both to do what you do? Easy for me. Uh, it's people like Nick. Uh, for me, I. I have the advantage of being the kid who never grew up. I, I'm a professional liar. I run around and get opportunities to do things that nobody else is allowed to. When I ride a horse. I have a super cool hawk on my arm. I'm flying through the air in a, in a kung fu fight. So I'm just waiting for people to have a vision and a dream to come along. And, and if, if I like that dream, it becomes my dream. So this is what keeps me going. It's meeting people like Nick, or meeting Nick, uh, and, and see the flames in their eyes, and, uh, and then they, it, it flames me as well, and it's like, let's go. I'm surprised, considering he has your bicycle. And what's, what's your reason? 
uh, I just I, I love I just love storytelling and I don't know where it comes from it's like playing with making movies with my Star Wars figures when I was seven and just going from there it's been no looking back I don't know where it came from I just love telling stories I, I know we're we, we're towards the end of the q and I know that you guys are cool with a few more right sure yeah um, I have not gone to the back and I want to make sure I, I, we're going to come back I promise as long as right over there yes Hi, thank you so much. Great movie. Love everything that you do. Um, I want to know why you changed the title from the Danish title that works so well in this movie. We, why we changed the title from the bastard to the promised land? <coughs> the uh, uh, U.S. Uh, distributors uh, felt it was a little negative. I think. Uh, <laughs> And the, re- the, the and, and and on certain levels I do, didn't understand it because I love the title the bastard. On another level, I did. In Denmark, the bastard only means an illegitimate son, so it doesn't mean a dick. You know, it just it just means like an illegitimate son. So I understand that the negative connotation might have made people think the film was about something else than it was. Yeah, right there. I I don't I don't have time. We come from Mexico. My daughter is love you. My daughter love you, and she makes a, a little thing for you. And what do you say? It's a doctor Simi in Mexico. Is so um, exciting, popular to give to you this one, and she was crying because he wanted to. to can I get you it? that one? I love it so much. Gracias, señor. <laughs> I love it. I, hon- I That's a great question. I honestly love it. <laughs> right here. Uh, Nick, this is, I believe, your sixth time working with the cinematographer, Rasmus. I hope right. I said it right. Um, right. What... The movie was shot beautifully. What problems did you have or trying to figure out solutions of filming in such a empty area for nature? Right. The, the sixth. The question was, it's the sixth time I've worked with the same DP. I, I've never worked with any other DP than this guy. And and there was not a lot of problems on this one because he, he has grown so much. Like, he was already great on our first film. But he's such a great DP. that, And he knows my brain so well because we've known each other since we were tw- in our 20s. So I had very little. Uh, he, he was just like, he was amazing, you know, and every single set up we were doing he he surpassed my dreams you know of what could what could be possible on a budget that we have so i would say no challenge at all <laughs> it was just a wonderful his work is fantastic yeah, in this it really is um right over there yeah i just want to mention that it's someone's birthday today they came to see you oh, no. happy birthday happy birthday and second i would like to uh ask about the weather conditions, how much preparation went into it? Was it a hindrance? Was it a help? The weather. Here's here's a funny anecdote about the weather. Because when you're working on a budget like we had, you don't have time to uh, say, oh, we're going to wait for a sunny day uh, or we're going to wait for a wintry day. We shot everything in the fall. So the way we did it was that uh, we, we would shoot a winter scene over here and we would do some such a, And then suddenly there was a guy, we had a, we had a person looking at this guy going there's sun coming and then we would like run over while we ran mass would change his clothes and get ready for a summer scene and we would walk over here and shoot a, lit just two images from that scene and then oh sun is gone back to the winter scene that was the craziest thing i've ever but it was so much fun we had a lot of fun doing that yeah yeah it's the best fun it's the best energy uh, because you feel like a unit everybody's all working on the same project right uh, but in, in 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 general i mean besides being a pain technically for a lot of departments when the weather is crazy it is a helping hand for the actor always because we don't have to pretend it anymore it's there right so we don't have to go whoa it's windy no it is really windy. You know? <laughs> uh, right there. 
Oh, um, I was wondering just about your experience co-writing the script with Anders Thomas Jensen. Mm -hmm. I'm a really big fan of him and I love the way you guys balance like darkness and humor in the script. Mm -hmm. So was your experience like writing the script with him and what was your experience working off of that? Well, I know them both very well. Uh, funny enough, some of the stuff I was 100% sure Anders Thomas was writing some of the funny punchlines and vice versa some of the more like emotional stuff. I got it completely wrong. <laughs> it turned out that, oh, Nick wrote that punchline, that little joke, and, and Thomas was going down a dark alley with some emotions here. And so so they, they rub off on each other in a fantastic way that surprises you. He's, he's amazing. He's a, he's a great writer. This is the, we've worked together before, but this is our first, what feels like our first real collaboration, true collaboration. Uh, and, and he's, he's incredible. And, and what he brought to, to me was something that I hadn't been able to, what I, that I hadn't been uh, able to do or, uh, in my previous films, which was a really true sort of emotional, like uh, uh, he wrote a lot of the and my moose uh, you know ludwig scenes and i i thought they were so beautiful and and he's he's not he's unafraid of being overtly emotional which i am a little afraid of so it was great to have him here and just push me and don't worry it's it's fine you can always tone it down if it gets too much i have a question about um how you know sorry asking that question oh um you worked with previous directors yeah it it's a combination i mean uh, it, it, let's put it this way if if nick who i wanted to work with again came up with something i really hated it, it, it wouldn't have happened, right? But but he, of course he doesn't. He comes up with something that I find fantastic and interesting. I'm curious. It's often the case when you work with somebody before that you really liked. It's 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 rarely going to happen that it kind of come up with something that you dislike. So 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 even if you kind of like it, but you're not really understanding it completely, you're willing to go there because you trust them, right? So so I, I, I have been working more than one time with a lot of people, and, and for that reason, because I, I do believe that the more comfortable you are with each other, the more you can push each other. Uh, and so, so that's just been my little safety net, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. That was great. That's a good finish. I, I don't know, and that's a terrible answer, but I don't know. It's always depending on if I'm working, or if I do have the time off, or uh, uh, if there's a, something else I have to do. So I'm not sure at this point. Can I do a follow-up to that? Yeah. How many, have you done a lot of conventions? I actually don't know. I've done a few, in a couple in America, a few in London, and a few in Asia. Uh, I've been to Tokyo and Seoul a couple of times and Osaka. Is it something that you enjoy? Is it something, you know it's what I mean? It's overwhelming. It, there's a lot of love in the room. When I say a lot, it's a lot. <laughs> uh, so, so you just have to you get ready for that because it is fantastic and beautiful, but it's also exhausting. But, but it's, I mean, it's fantastic. People get a photo, they get an autograph. It's so fast sometimes that you're ashamed of yourself. But it, it, this is what it is when, uh, when they do cons like that. And so, so it's an overwhelming emotional experience. So, but I do enjoy meeting all these people. On that note, I'm going to say a few quick things. One, validate. <laughs> Two, if you enjoyed the movie, there's this thing called social media. Please uh, you mention, you know, tag the film. Uh, if you want to tag Collider or Landmark Theaters, I'll be more than happy to retweet you or link you. You know what I mean? I want to really help push the movie. And on that note, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming out. And let's give a thank warm so round of applause. Thank you so much.